Hi, and welcome to Show Me The Things. This is uh, our mother-daughter channel devoted to doing and spending time together and then showing you what we do. So today we're gonna talk about basic Italian uh, macaron. Not macaroons, macaroons are made with coconut. Macaron are the cute little sandwich cookies that you get at the bakeries for, you know, $10 per six. So there's a few things you're gonna need for this. It's actually not a lot of things, but there's some things. Um, you're gonna need some kind of mixer. We prefer KitchenAid, that's our thing. Uh, you'll need a whipper. You'll need the bowl scraper. You'll need a scale that measures in grams. Amazon, $10. You'll need a thermometer that goes up to at least 250. Very important. Um, you will need a pan. I prefer the Airbag pans like this. This is my old one. But uh, if you have new cookie sheets that aren't worked, you can use those as well. We're also using a silicone mat that have the macaron size on it. It's not necessary, you can print them off the internet and use those for sizing underneath. We're gonna use parchment paper to actually pipe the macaroons on. Uh, the reason why we're using parchment paper is because then the macaron doesn't stick. We have piping bags for our filling. And for the actual macaron, I'm just gonna use a plain plastic bag because a lot of people don't have piping bags. Uh, ingredient wise, we are looking at, for the macaron cookie, we're looking at 212 grams each of powdered sugar and um, almond flour. We also need egg whites. We need one that is 82 grams, one that is 90 grams. They must be at room temperature. You're gonna need one stick of butter. Now, if you're like me and you do rolled butter, you're gonna need uh, 113 grams of rolled butter. So that also needs to be at room temperature to mix them correctly. This is part of our filling. This powdered sugar goes with that. That is three quarters of a cup or 84 grams of powdered sugar. You're gonna need a teaspoon of vanilla. And today we're gonna to make cinnamon roll macarons. So we're using cinnamon. We'll use about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of that. To make the Italian meringue, we're gonna use part of the egg whites. And then we're gonna have 236 grams of regular sugar, right? Just granulated sugar and a 158 grams of water. You'll need a fork to mix things in. You'll also need a sifter. Now I'm kind of old school. My grandmother taught me with these. I still think they're the best because I think they get everything out really, really well. You'll see on a lot of videos, people use just the, the handheld sifters. Like I said, I like this better. Uh, you'll need a, a mixing bowl to mix everything into, and that's it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have to sift our almond flour and our powdered sugar together. Uh, and you have to do this twice. There's a very specific reason for it. Uh, the, you want a good mix of the almond flour and the powdered sugar. Uh, the easiest way to do this, honestly, is to set your sifter inside your bowl, kind of mix up as you go, and then we'll transfer it back to a bowl and we'll re-sift it. So, it's not very exciting. Uh, now, the part of the reason for this is almond flour tends to stick together. So as you're going through and you're sifting, you wanna make sure that they get well incorporated and that each little bit of almond flour is separated and that it gets coated in powdered sugar. I know it's not very fun to have to go through and do this, and a lot of the shows only show you to do it once, um, but I think getting a good consistency in your almond flour is super important. Uh, I kind of like this because one, it doesn't make a lot of mess, which is uh, always a big deal for me when I'm in the kitchen. I always seem to have flour everywhere. If you ever watch me bake bread, you'll find that out pretty quickly. Um, so being able to kind of contain the mess that comes from sifting is a big deal for me because I also don't like mess. Okay, so now we're gonna whip the egg whites. I don't know about you guys, um, but there is a lot of mystery that's out on the web about the perfect egg white. Some people actually wipe down the insides of their bowls with vinegar. The reason why is egg whites react to acid. Acid makes them get big and fluffy. I kind of do a different trick, again, that I learned from my grandmother. So after you attach your beaters, whatever that might be, you take your room temperature egg whites, the 82 grams, and then I actually use cream of tartar. Now there's a very specific reason why I use cream of tartar. It, it evaporates in really well. I do two pinches 
which is probably about an eighth of a teaspoon. And so what that does, like I said, it adds acid. So now we're gonna turn the KitchenAid on. It's gonna be super loud. Yeah, yeah. is the kind of frothy stage I was telling you about. You can see the bubbles are really big and it's really, really loose. We're gonna beat this until it gets solid. And then as it's beating later, we're gonna add sugar syrup to it. So when you make eggs like this, if you were to draw a figure inside of it, that it holds. See how it holds? And the bubbles are really, really small. So that's super important because it has to have enough structure to hold up and not be liquid enough to hold up to the sugar syrup that we're putting in. Okay, so now we're gonna make sugar syrup. People always say sugar syrup is the hardest thing in the world to make. It's not, not at all. If you were gonna make simple syrup for, let's say like a drink, you would use equal parts water and syrup. Right now we're using approximately two thirds to one part. So we have one part of sugar, which I already gave you the totals for. We're gonna put the heat on would help if I turn on the right burger. We'll put the heat to about five. I'm gonna pour the water in. And then we're just gonna kinda let it go. Mix it up just a little bit to let it show, to let all the sugar get wet. Once it's mixed, leave it alone. Don't touch it, that's the biggest thing because when you start messing with sugar, weird things happen. Now you also need to know that around the sides of the bowl, we might see some sugar crystals forming. People get really upset about this. I don't usually care because once I put it into, I pour the, the sugar syrup into my mixed egg whites, the, the crystals aren't there anymore or they don't come off the sides when I put them into the pan. So this takes a good five minutes, if or ish, to take it up to 10. Again, you need your thermostat or your thermostat, your thermometer. It has to go up to at least 250. Ideal range is between 248 and 250. When the sugar gets to that temperature, that's gonna be the right time to pull it off and move it directly into the, the mixer for your eggs. So the water will come to a boil super, super quick because it's super, super hot. The sugar takes a little longer, and as you're boiling, the sugar is boiling off the water. As it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, you're gonna see a lot of steam. You'll also see it bloom up. So make sure that your pan that you're using is big enough to contain it. I don't usually like my water to come up to more than about a third of the way on the pan. I've had some incredibly miraculous and scary sugar overloads, which caused my fire alarms to go off because they went down into my burn. You'll start to see bubbles forming along the bottom. Uh, that's where the sugar is starting to liquidate. it. And now it's just a waiting game to wait for it to come all the way through. So we've come up to 10. We are at the 250 range. I'm gonna bring this over here. You wanna do this. I take it to 250 specifically because I, I know that we're gonna lose some time transferring over to do this. Start your mixer on low. Give your eggs a quick brisk mix up. That's what Back it down to low. And now we're gonna pour this. And it's gonna pour really, really slowly. You wanna to try to not hit the sides of the bowl, you wanna try and hit the actual egg whites. And not do what I just did. Once your sugar is completely incorporated, we're gonna crank this bad boy up to high, and we're gonna let it whip for probably about 10 minutes. Exact same way, actually the same amount. However, we would have to 
with the sweet chili would be cold. Like seriously, room temperature kind of cold before we added the butter. Because if you add butter to hot things, it melts. But because we're using this as just as a straight meringue, we're gonna let this go until it's cooled down. Turn off our handy dandy kitchen. Take our thing off. So you'll see some really cool things as you do egg whites. That is a very stiff peak. If I come in, see how it stands up on its own? You also discover that this is basically marshmallow, right? So I'm just kind of taking stuff off the side. If you look really closely, you can see little sugar hairs that are formed from where we put in the syrup originally. Okay, so now we're going to take it over. We're going to start mixing stuff in. So why don't you join me at the table? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to mix our other container of egg whites and we're going to mix it directly into our flour mixture. What that does is it makes a paste. Then I'm going to mix a third of this meringue mixture over here in, and I'm going to beat the hell out of it. Then we'll take the rest of the meringue mixture, we'll fold it in, and that'll be our base for our macaron. And I always think it's funny because no matter how bleached or unbleached your omelet flour is, it turns white, and then it turns yellow. So this is our mix. You can see it's starting to come together. It's basically forming a dough. And then it's all incorporated. And you don't see any more dry flour. And you don't have any lumps. You get a consistency about like that, right? So now I'm going to take about a third of my meringue mixture. As you can see, it's really pretty and white and incredibly sticky. And I'll mix this in. And you really want to mix this in well. If there's a whole bunch of reasons why you fold things into things, but invariably when you're folding something into something else, you always take the base of what you're folding into and you add a third of whatever you're adding to that base. It helps keep everything together. So, now we'll add the rest. And again, remember I told you about the sugar crystals on the side. I've told you I don't care. I've never had any problems with it. Um, some people get really antsy about it. I just don't scrape very hard, so I don't worry too much. Obviously, Kitty doesn't like my opinion of my sugar mixture. Okay, so we fold this way. Fold is a cut in half and around, and a cut in half and around, and a cut in half and around. And you have to make sure that you don't deflate it. It's easy to do with straight egg whites to deflate something. This mixture is not particularly easy to deflate, but still, you don't want to beat the hell out of it. You also want to make sure that you don't wind up with white streaks like what's in here now, because that's just meringue. There's no flour attached to that and no sugar, other than what's in the meringue itself. So we get it about like so. You can see it's fairly even through. And now we're going to transfer it to our farming bag. Okay, so now we're going to transfer. A lot of people don't have piping bags. I had a, somebody ask me once, do I need to buy a piping bag? What size tip do I need? Yeah, don't. Not for this portion anyway. And technically, you never need a piping bag as it is. So I am using my handy dandy Avengers cup. Because you need something stable. At home, I have a big vase that I use and I pop my bags inside of that. What we're doing is we're just putting it in, like so, right? And then I'm going to pick up this massively heavy bowl in the basic 
sugar and flour mixture that's in here. And we're going to pop that right into the cup. And this is super, super, super sticky. Just be aware if you get it on your clothes or on your hands, you're going to need like crazy hot water to get it out because it, it solidifies pretty quickly. Okay, as you can see, most of the drop off this, we're just going to come in and wipe down the spatula because again, super, super sticky. I'm going to take up the bag with my handy dandy Avengers cup. Now I'm going to seal the bag. And I'm going to crush all the air out of it before I seal it completely. Okay, so now I have a homemade piping bag. Okay, so Mel and I have done a little bit of prep work. I've opened up a bunch of sheets already out of parchment paper. I have my tray and I have my template. I bought the silicone mats because I thought, oh, hey, silicone mats, they'll be so easy to use. Lies, all lies. So, I developed a system where I take parchment paper, and you can see that without it reflecting, but I can see the template underneath, right? So you can see the circles. And depending on the size you want your mat in, you take it directly out to at least this black line. You can go as big as the dots, but I usually stick mine with the block. So I center it on my sheet, get my piping paper, or get my, my parchment paper all ready, I have my cutesy doopsy handy dandy bag, right? So we have our tip. So you don't want a lot of this to leak out at one time, but be aware it's thick, so you do need a little bit of pressure. However, if you hold it upside down long enough, it will leak. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna flatten that end. I'm gonna cut off. I don't know if you can see that. It's about that much. There's not much there. So then I'm gonna pinch the end. Bring my bag together, and I'm going to then center and start piping according to the template. That doesn't take much, and everybody gets really concerned about shapes and things like that. But the cool thing about it is, is when you pile things up in a pile, and you put it on a hard surface, and you blow it out, it naturally goes into the shape of a, sh of a circle. So got it out to the ends of each one. And you'll get, I don't know, probably 24 on each pan, give or take. Now I've piped all these. I'm going to take this bag and kind of tip it this way and I'm going to prop it against my scissors, hopefully, so that it will stay and not leak stuff everywhere. Now, the thing about macarons is you have to knock all the air out of it, right? So we're going to take our tray just like this. knocks all the air bubbles out and if you look closely you can see where some of already pop. I try and drop them pretty high. So we're just going to repeat this process until we're out of it. Okay so now we're going to make our filling. This is basically just American buttercream. That's all it is. Uh, I am not a big fan of American buttercream as anyone who knows me will tell you. We're going to take our powdered sugar if I can avoid breaking the bowl. And I'm going to add the splash guard. Now this may or may not necessarily help me that much, but we'll give it a shot. You want your room temperature butter and you need it softened. You're going to add it bit by bit. So that means I'm going to put this up and you need the bowl scraper attachment. And we're going to put it on slow to begin with. Pop that in. Now, 
a lot of people add milk or cream to buttercream, like a tablespoon. I don't need that with this because we're adding vanilla. So that will help melt the sugar into the sauce. So get this going. Get enough in there that you don't sploosh powdered sugar everywhere. I've done that more times than I can count. It's not nearly as much fun to clean up as it is to do. All right. Keep this in. We're going to scrape down the sides, try and incorporate any buttercream that's down at, or any sugar that's down at the bottom into the buttercream. Scrape it off on our paddle because that's what it's there for. At least. Scrape down the sides again. I'm going to add my vanilla. Use about a teaspoon, give or take. If you like a really strong vanilla flavor, do about a teaspoon and a half. The reason why I'm adding a little bit more to this is because we want to do a um, cinnamon roll type of flavor. Okay, once my liquid's mixed in, like I said, this doesn't take long. without actually causing massive damage because we like cinnamon in this house. Plus it's good for you. I hear there's health benefits. I love cinnamon. <laughs> you love cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Again, we're gonna mix this. Yeah, it's so much easier with the mixer on this one because it's so small. and mixed in. Cream together well and then I'm going to put it into a packing bag and I'm putting it in the fridge. Okay, that's pretty good. Now remember, when you're doing stuff like this, it's not about perfection. It's just about having fun and enjoying what you're doing. Okay. It's all mixed in. Whatever isn't completely mixed, I'll mix it in. All right. So as you can see, my macarons kind of came out egg shaped because, well, I cut my bag wrong. <laughs> but you know, live and learn, whatever. That said, now these need to sit. They have to form a skin on the top. So if you ever notice, all macarons have what they call a foot which is they have this real smooth top and it goes down the sides and then there's almost like this frilly lacy section that is around the bottom. That foot is only formed because there's a skin that forms over the top of the macaroon. So these have to dry. They need to dry for at least 30 minutes. That 30 minute period, go do your dishes, go sit down, go whatever. Come back and check them in 30 minutes. If you cannot touch the top without it sticking like so, um, then the macaron isn't dry enough, so you need to let it dry some more. You can go 45 minutes usually, that works about well too. So there you go, we'll uh, come back in 30 minutes. So now we're going to stick these in the oven at 350. Well, we preheated the oven to 350. Now I have to drop it down to 325. Don't ask me why, I don't know. We're going to pop these in. And I'm going to set a timer for 11 minutes. Maybe. Okay. While that's happening, we're going to go work on our um, filling. Okay. So, 
buttercream. You can see the buttercream consistency. It's pretty buttery. Macaron normally does not have a ton of cream inside, right? It's mostly cookie. However, I do usually like to make a lot more cream than this, but as we're doing this as an instructional video, we will do this. We will do this as as possible. Stick to the recipe, Jen. Stick to the recipe. Don't improvise. All right. Got my buttercream in my piping bag. This bad boy off my handy Avengers cup. And you can see there's not much in here. I'm going to set this in the fridge for about five minutes just to, to solidify just a little bit more. And then we'll pull these out of the oven. Okay, so I'm just going to remove these from the parchment paper. Because I am not a pro macaron maker, although my macarons always taste good, they don't necessarily always look as good as the ones you buy in the store. But as my mother always said, nothing goes into your stomach in one piece. So, pop them off the sheet. And I have a little trick that I use. I put my fingers in the sheet and kind of wiggle it back and forth to get the, the sides to release. And sometimes the sides release really well. And sometimes they don't, like that, and it breaks. But again, yeah. Okay, so my first tray uh, kind of stuck to the paper. Okay, so we're calling it a sacrifice to the macaron gods, which is only fitting because, you know, I haven't made these in a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our piping bag. We're going to run a thin line of buttercream just around it, just enough to cover, okay? just like that. Take another macaron, put it on. Voila, macaron. So I'll go ahead and fill these, and then we will give them a try. You can store them in the fridge. As a matter of fact, I probably would. You can put them on the counter, but if you're going to leave them on the counter, you can't leave them on the counter for very long because obviously your center for your macaron is uh, perishable. It's got butter in it. So because I'm not a professional baker and I didn't pipe these out, I'm just going to kind of find ones that match hopefully, and make them kind of look the same. Which is, you know, the trick to getting through life. You just make do with what you have and you call it good. And if somebody doesn't like it, well, forget them. So like I said, these are cinnamon, cinnamon roll. So basically it's cinnamon and vanilla. Is it good? It tastes just like a cinnamon roll. Kind of the point. 